Subscribe to Teco on YouTube or you will forever be a bot at Fortnite. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, editing is definitely one of the hardest mechanics to master in Fortnite. And if you're doing all the normal recommended stuff like edit maps, free builds, etc, etc, and still don't seem to improve at any fast pace, then this video is perfect for you. What I'm going to be doing in this video is not only giving you specific tips and drills to practice more efficiently, but I'll also be giving you some fundamentals you can practice to improve way faster as well. The information in this video is mostly stuff I've learned from watching a ton of pro players who specialize in editing, especially Mr. Savage and Raider464. I know Raider's not technically a pro, but I mean, come on, look at his edits. Along with some knowledge from my own experience improving at editing. So with that said, be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, subscribe if you'd like to see more content just like this, and let's get into the first tip. So, I'm going to start this video by going over some fundamentals you can work on to start, and then I'll move on to some specific maps, drills, and other methods to practice. Anyway guys, this first tip is something Raider464 covered in one of his past videos named How to Reach Maximum Edit Speed. I know this was a while ago, but I couldn't help but include it in this video. And this tip is to minimize your crosshair movement when you edit. Minimizing your crosshair movement when editing is a super easy way to improve your speed. To put it simply, crosshair movement just means how far or how much you move your crosshair to select the tiles of an edit. Take this as an example. If your crosshair movement looks like the picture on the left, it'll take you way longer before you're able to edit. However, if your edit looks like the one on the right, then you'll hardly have to move your crosshair whether it's your stick or your mouse or even your finger if you play on mobile. And that's basically the tip. So, when you edit, always try to find the shortest way to move your crosshair to select the tiles for your edit. You can easily practice this in creative by literally just going into an open map and just doing it over and over again, doing it with different edits like arches, ramps, etc, etc. Another tip I learned from Raider's video is a pretty simple one, and that's to always have your crosshair set up on the tile your edit starts on before actually editing. There's really not that much detail to this one, because it's mostly self-explanatory. If you have to move your crosshair extra distance before starting your edit, it'll not only make your edit take longer, but it'll increase your chances of messing up the edit because of the extra adjustment you'll have to make before even editing the tile. So regarding these first two tips, the only consistent way to get these first two fundamentals into your head is to constantly keep them in mind while you practice. Now it'll be hard to constantly keep it in your head, but if you can do it, then it'll turn into a habit given a bit of time. I remember when I first started trying to learn these fundamentals, what I did was literally write them on a sticky note and attach it to my monitor. That way, every single time I got into a fight in game, I'd be able to remember these, focus on them, and eventually it just turned into a habit for me. As long as you can keep these fundamentals in mind, as well as keeping yourself in check, you should be able to master them relatively fast. But overall, those two fundamentals are some of the most important. So now, we'll move on to some specific settings you can modify to get better at editing, then after that we'll move into how you can actually practice effectively. And the first of these settings is Confirm Edit on Release. Now, if you're not using Confirm Edit on Release already, you're missing out because switching to it has a ton of benefits. But the main benefit is obviously the speed. Instead of having to press your edit button twice, you can simply press the button and click and you've got an edit down. I'm not even exaggerating when I say for a lot of players, this quite literally doubles their edit speed. Did Teco's videos double my edit speed? What? Like, the difference in terms of speed is actually ridiculous with confirm edit on release, and I honestly recommend it regardless of your skill level, whether you're a complete bot or a higher level player. Overall, if you don't have confirm edit on release enabled already, and you're not a pro who's been using a single bind for years and is completely used to it and has like insane speed, then you should definitely consider trying it out. Also, I'd like to briefly touch on this kind of myth that confirm edit on release has a delay. Um, to put it simply, confirm edit on release has no delay. Some people are going to say that, but it really doesn't. It's just that it takes a long time to adjust to because it's kind of an awkward way of editing, especially because most of us are used to editing in a specific way because we've been doing it for years. Overall, if you give it the time and you actually practice it, you'll notice that there's no delay and it actually works insanely well. But with that said, let's move on. The next thing I want to touch on is your sensitivity. 
Now, you may think I'm talking about editing sensitivity, which a lot of this is, but it still goes for mouse and keyboard players or those on other platforms that don't have separate building and editing sensitivities. Now, in terms of editing, finding your sensitivity is a lot harder than simply building or aiming, and that's because you have to have a very delicate balance of being fast enough where you can perform some of the more advanced edits, but also slow enough where you can be accurate doing so. This is a really difficult balance to reach, but it's definitely possible. Now, for controller players, it's really a pretty easy balance to find. Keep the general sensitivity you like, non-ADS, not building and editing or anything like that, just keep your normal sensitivity, and simply adjust your editing sensitivity until you find something you're comfortable with. Spend some time free building or in an edit map and get a feel for a bunch of them, then continue playing with whatever you like best. For mouse and keyboard players, at the time of making this video, there isn't a building or editing sensitivity option. Epic, if you're watching this, please add it. So, you'll basically have to do the same thing controller players do, but also include building and aiming in your sensitivity choice. That means that you'll have to balance all the mechanics of aiming, editing, and building all in one sensitivity. And that right there is the reason why most keyboard and mouse pros use somewhat of a middle ground sensitivity. Not super low where they struggle mechanically, but also not super high where they can't hit a shot to save their life. Now, I can't give you an exact sensitivity that'll work for everyone, because everybody perceives sensitivity differently, but a good area to experiment with is between 60 and 90 eDPI. This is the area where most people seem to be comfortable, and the area that most pros use with a few exceptions, but obviously it may vary person to person. If you don't know already, eDPI is calculated by multiplying your mouse DPI by your in-game sensitivity in decimal form. So, a sensitivity of 7% on 800 dpi would just be 800 times 0 0.07, and that would be 56 edpi. So ultimately, just mess around with your sensitivity and try to find that middle ground sensitivity that allows you to do all your mechanics fluidly. Next up, I'm going to be talking all about how you can actually practice your editing efficiently. I first want to briefly touch on one of the most important aspects of practice, especially when it comes to editing, and that's repetition. Too many people make the mistake of going into creative and simply free building and messing around instead of using it for actual practice. One huge thing I learned from an awesome content creator named MachineWrite is to practice in terms of reps. Reps literally is short for the word repetitions, so this basically means doing the same exact technique over and over again to kind of drill it into your head. Say, for example, I'm learning to side jump. Instead of just toying with it and trying to maybe implement it into my free builds or something like that, I would instead practice it directly, over and over, to maximize my efficiency in doing it. So whenever you're trying to learn or practice a new technique, do it in repetitions over and over again instead of just doing it randomly, and see how much more efficient your practice becomes. Now finally, I want to go over some specific methods to actually improve your editing and put everything into practice. And this starts with, quite obviously, practicing it straight up in creative. Honestly, one of the easiest ways to get better at editing is to simply find a new editing technique and practice it over and over and over and over. The thing about editing is that almost every single technique you can learn carries into a ton of other techniques. For example, the fundamentals from a simple triple edit are involved in potentially hundreds of unique high ground retakes and other techniques that are actually useful in game. The same applies to most other techniques as well, so if you're trying to strengthen your fundamentals in editing, try to practice a bunch of new techniques. Maybe do one technique a day and set aside 30 minutes to solely do that technique, as we talked about earlier in repetitions. This whole sort of carrying into other techniques, it kind of sounds strange at first, but when you really think about it, it actually makes a ton of sense. Next up is an actual creative map where you can find a ton of really useful drills, now, if you've watched me for a while, you probably know that I don't typically recommend edit maps just because they're not as realistic as real game fights and don't really put you in those high pressure situations that you'll have to deal with in real matches. However, they obviously do have some value, and if you use them as a supplement to your other editing practice, they can actually be extremely helpful. This specific map that I like is called Flea's Editing Dictionary, made by an awesome YouTuber named Flea. I'll put the code up on screen right now if you'd like to write it down or type it into your creative map selection. Now, I won't go into too much detail on the entire map because obviously that would take a very long time, but essentially there are four portals from spawn, including edit ups, edit downs, edit towers, and edit tunnels. Every section here has its uses, and I ultimately recommend trying them all. While this map isn't the most efficient way to practice your editing, it definitely helps a ton if you do it on the side or as part of your warm up. 
The next thing I'd like to point out in terms of practice is that you should always make sure to practice what are called awkward edits. Awkward edits are, as their name implies, where you're in an awkward position and you have to edit. Pretty much all of us can do a simple triangle edit on a wall or a double edit up a ramp, but the main thing that separates good and great editors is the ability to edit your way out of a bad situation. There are a ton of situations in real games where you'll run into an awkward edit or even in a normal creative box fight as well. So spend some time and solely focus on mastering these awkward edits. You can practice these by simply putting yourself in the situation intentionally in your own creative world, or you could also use this awesome map by a creator named Donkey. This map is basically an awkward edit course and makes you edit from a lot of weird positions and angles that are pretty hard to simulate in your own creative world, but that you'll run into quite a bit in the actual game. So overall, if you're struggling with editing in real games and you feel like you're struggling to get out of awkward situations, chances are awkward edits are playing a big role in that, and I personally believe that practicing them will help you perform much better in real situations. And with that said guys, I really hope you all enjoyed this video and that it helps you out to improve your editing. If it did help you out, or you feel like it's going to help you out, be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe if you'd like to see more content just like this. Also, if you want to go that extra step and support me further, it would really mean a lot if you could use code TECO in your Fortnite item shop. It's super easy to do, literally takes 2 seconds, and it really makes a huge difference for me. The support has been literally insane lately guys, and I couldn't thank you all enough. Expect a lot more consistent videos coming soon. But anyway guys, I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.